IC House. Integrated Circuits. Good morning, good day, good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Markus Meyer. I'm your moderator today. And with me, there's Goran Pancha, our export expert for the uh, reflective encoder ICs. Before we start with the presentation, let me say a few words about the webinar tool. Um, here you see the control panel of the webinar tool. By clicking on the red arrow, you can open and close the control panel. And within the control panel, there's the question section. Here you can type in your questions and these questions will be sent to the webinar team and we will go through this list of questions after the presentation. Um, this is the main screen. The top you see the speaker and on the bottom there's the presentation content. In the middle there is a slider and uh, you can enlarge uh, the speaker or the presentation content by grabbing the slider and uh, moving it up and down. But please be careful, don't go all the way up or all the way down, then you might lose some content or one of these screens. So then we can start with the presentation. Today, our topic is the world of mini encoder ICs. And Goran, this sounds for me like an exciting movie. So let's watch what you will present. Thank you, Magnus. Uh, hello and welcome. Uh, my name is uh, Goran Pancha. Um, I'm responsible for the optical reflective encoder ICs here at IC House. And today I would like to um, talk and show you some applications, um, some ICs, some solutions, how to use or implement our mini encoder ICs in especially mini environmental um, encoders or mini um, space uh, uh, requirements. So let's start with our lineup. And um, what you see here is our optical reflective encoder IC lineup, starting with uh, ICPG, PX, PR, and PZ. Uh, these encoder ICs um, are um, more or less based on the same optical uh, technology, reflective technology, uh, starting with uh, incremental ones, um, pure uh, A, B uh, outputs or A, B, Z and analog outputs. And of course, some um, like the ICPZ with um, some um, incremental and uh, pseudo-random code um, scanning uh, functions so that you get the absolute position. So. Uh, beside, and this is very obvious, um, that uh, the sensors are very small. You see the packages are starting from 3 by 3 millimeter, um, going up to 5 by 5. Um, I would like to point out some uh, markets, industries, applications where you can um, maybe uh, imagine where these sensors can be used and uh, implemented. So let's start with some basic things about uh, motor feedback systems, of course, all these uh, encoders, um, ICs are used in motor feedback systems in different variations, types, uh, variants. And when we talk about, or from our perspective, when we talk about uh, mini encoders, uh, we focus on um, diameters starting from four millimeters up to 18 or less, let's say less than 20 millimeter diameter. But of course also, as you can see here, um, we also have uh, some solutions uh, um, um, with uh, our sensors in the miniature linear guide or rails, uh, which needs uh, or um, needs a very small uh, uh, in their sensor head. So um, of course, uh, we see also a huge requests of kit encoders, especially in robotics and uh, when it comes to, let's say, cobots, um, when it comes uh, down to the uh, end of the uh, arm or joint, there is also some uh, grippers, screwdrivers, which are now implemented or sensors used for uh, detecting position or speed uh, in this case. So, for example, in the medical um, um, markets, we also see a growing demand on uh, really small encoder solutions, uh, incremental ones, but also absolute. Uh, we see a certain growth in bionic prosthesis and surgical robots, um, because here we have the uh, big advantage with the small sensor and small targets, which fits very nice in very tight uh, space uh, and uh, housings. 
Then uh, we see markets like uh, what we call the scanning applications. Uh, of course, uh, some are driven by LiDAR um, developments, which are going on on the market, but also in CCTV uh, security applications or gimbals, uh, where also uh, the housed uh, encoder are too big, and therefore the uh, mini encoders are implemented as a kit encoder or as a single um, uh, simulated uh, module with the sensor and the code disk. And then we have, uh, especially for uh, the so-called um, panel mount encoders, uh, ICPG, which is a rather low resolution um, IC, but um, has some special functions like uh, the push, push button function. That means that the sensor can detect also the distance between the code disk and the sensor. Uh, but in general, um, these uh, sensors can be used for human uh, machine interfaces uh, from knobs starting up to any kind of uh, rotating uh, mechanical um, uh, um, yeah, knob switches. So um, what I like to also point out is um, the optical reflective technology that uh, I see how it uses. And uh, as you can see here, um, as a cross-section or a picture of the cross-section of the sensor and the module, is that um, the sensors are uh, lead frame based. Uh, inside we have the uh, CMOS uh, integrated circuits. There is the light uh, source. And then we have, depending on if it's in a pure incremental one track scanning uh, principle, or in this case on the left side, what you see is um, the um, two scanning principle that means uh, that we uh, scan with one uh, photodiode array the incremental track and with the other one we scan the absolute. Of course um, this uh, works also with just single track as we have for the incremental ones or the absolute where we just have an absolute code uh, with a one track design. Uh, of course uh, this is shown here as a rotary uh, application or example but uh, this is also possible, of course, for linear applications, and uh, especially for the ICPZ, uh, which I will explain later on, you can go up to 6.7 meters maximum length. Um, beside the um, sensor um, technology, uh, of course, uh, we have to talk about the uh, targets, because uh, compared to the transmissive uh, solutions, uh, there is some requirement uh, for the reflective target. And uh, this is summarized here in this slide. Uh, that means we need, of course, some requirements regarding the uh, reflection. And that's uh, what we call the um, regular reflection. That means that we need uh, definitely a mirror-like reflection uh, with a certain um, reflectancy uh, of the uh, metallic, typically metallic surfaces. Um, and uh, as you can see, uh, due to the fact that we have the blue LED or using a blue LED inside um, the package, um, the mirror surface should uh, reflect in the range of 450 to 500 nanometers and the uh, reflectivity should be greater than 60%. And of course, we um, need uh, less than 10% from the non-reflective part. As uh, long as these uh, values are reached with the target, um, these um, sensors will work uh, properly and uh, without any issues. So let's start to explain the uh, sensors in detail. Um, as you can see, the ICPG, this is an, um, uh, as I mentioned, three by three, very small uh, absolute encoder IC, which works with an um, eight millimeter disc. Uh, this is an absolute track on eight millimeter diameter. And uh, scanning over one revolution, you will get uh, 30 absolute positions. And the output is uh, a grade code parallel output. A grade code parallel output, uh, which means that we have uh, more than just uh, one uh, pin. And uh, of course, we have uh, these uh, functions that we call the push button function. That means that we can detect the distance of the code disk uh, to um, the sensor itself. So. Um, and uh, one of the big advantages of our uh, optical reflective technology is that we have, uh, from our perspective, 
well, quite uh, huge or big tolerances regarding the assembly. That means the assembly of the sensor versus the code disk. And as you can see here, the air gap, uh, for example, for ICPG is in the range uh, of one to 2.5 millimeters. So, um, so let's talk about, of course, uh, space requirement, because um, as we talk about uh, mini encoder applications, space uh, on the PC board or inside a system is uh, quite limited. And as you can see here for the ICPG and also from the uh, schematic on the right side, uh, beside the uh, ICPG, um, you only need a certain two standard uh, capacitors on the supply voltage and more or less uh, combined with the code disk uh, and the space of quite conservative uh, six by six millimeter, uh, you have a, a functional uh, reflective optical um, system with 30 um, absolute positions. Uh, beside the X and Y dimensions, um, of course, the installation height is an issue. And uh, here is an example that uh, the package that we use for our optical encoder IC is in the, is in range of 0.9 millimeter. Uh, the air gap uh, for ICPG can vary between 1 and 2.5 due to the uh, push button function where you can get the uh, uh, voltage uh, uh, out of the distance uh, of the sensor. And for example, if you buy our evaluation kit, uh, this comes with an aluminum disc, which is 0.5. So this uh, will end up in maximum um, installation height of uh, less than 4 millimeter. Uh, of course, there is to add, or depending on your substrates, uh, some customers are using, of course, uh, um, flex uh, substrates or maybe ceramics. So this can be definitely be less than, in total, less with a substrate of five millimeter. So let's continue with ICPX and ICPR. Uh, these are our incremental um, optical reflective ICs. The um, ICPX is the two-channel AB pure digital output, and uh, ICPR is uh, three-channel. That means that also the index is detected. And uh, the smallest disk that we offer uh, for the ICPR is uh, starts with four millimeter, and on, from this four millimeter code disk, you can get up to um, 1024 CPR due to the fact that we have an implemented uh, six-bit uh, flash uh, interpolator core. And uh, this will lead you to uh, this resolution by, by just a four millimeter disk. Of course, um, you can uh, or we can also recommend some designs where we expand or uh, make the disk bigger and therefore you will end up in a higher resolution depending on your uh, final uh, the diameter of the code disk. On the right side, you see the um, uh, dimensions um, of uh, the tangential and radial displacement, uh, which is from our, still, from our perspective, very huge. We are in the range of 0.5 millimeters. Uh, and the air gap is uh, between 1.1 millimeter to 3 millimeter. Um, and you will find some recommendations for the nominal position or an nominal air gap, which is for the incremental in the range of 1.5 millimeter. Yeah, and here you see a certain design, so it's more or less straightforward like uh, we have seen for the ICPG. Um, the sensor itself needs, of course, some wiring for the selective pins because you can set up uh, different uh, interpolation factors, but you can see also set also the analog output but still, uh, more or less, you just need uh, very few components. And uh, from our perspective, uh, this dimension should be or can be in the range of eight by eight millimeter what is needed just for the sensor. When we talk about the Z height, um, as I mentioned before, 0.9 millimeter is the OQFN uh, 24 four by four. The air gap and the nominal air gap that we recommend is 1.5. And in combination with the 0.5 millimeter disc, uh, you will end up with less than three millimeter total height for the sensor and the code disc. So then we 
um, have here the ICPZ, which is our uh, high uh, resolution absolute uh, IC, um, which can be um, used with a nine millimeter disc. This is the smallest disc that we offer for the ICPZ. Uh, in generally, ICPZ has a function that it's called flex code. And flex code means that uh, the ICPZ series can be used with the same setup, same electronics, same software, starting from nine millimeter, going up to 18, 80 millimeter to linear. So you can use uh, more or less the same architecture, the same electronics, uh, and uh, use or change just the code disk. So the smallest is the nine millimeter disk. Uh, with the um, uh, 40 bit interpolator core, uh, we can get up to 20, 20 bit absolute information and still have all the flexibility uh, to choose uh, all these uh, digital interfaces like uh, ABZ, UVW, BIS, SSI, SPI, and of course, you can uh, get out the analog sine cosine from the sensor. Uh, the nice feature for, of ICPZ is also that he, you can combine almost any combination and get three outputs uh, in parallel. So um, you can make uh, different combinations of the output uh, just by software and programming. The package uh, is the OKFN uh, 32 five by five. And as you can see that the tolerances are for a high resolution system like the ICPZ very high, it's 0.5 in tangential, radial 0.4, and uh, the air gap is 1.75 with plus minus 0.5 millimeter. Um, generally about the temperature, um, uh, all our optical reflective uh, encoder ICs are qualified and works between minus 40 to 105 degrees. Um, the ICPZ is extended to 125 uh, degrees uh, maximum. So ICPZ, <clears throat> as you can see in the schematic here on the right side, uh, of course needs a certain uh, amount of uh, components but uh, still just uh, a few. We have some standard capacitors, there are some resistors, and the only thing that we also need here in addition is an EEPROM, an external EEPROM, which you can see on the left side, uh, which is still uh, in the range from our perspective. This is just a two layer design by 12 by 12 millimeters combined with the nine millimeter code disc. So that's all that the, the ICPZ needs uh, to have the full functionality um, as we have specified and with these key features. So the uh, installation height is here, uh, again, 0.9. The air gap is nominal 175. And uh, this also leads to just a slight over three millimeter um, total height. So I would like to also point out, uh, especially if you uh, like to test or like to evaluate the first uh, signals or the uh, matchup of the sensor and the code disk, uh, we offer for all our optical and reflective uh, encoder ICs, we offer an so-called evaluation kit or demo boards, uh, which can be used for lab measurements or first trials. Um, and uh, this comes with uh, uh, what we call the scanner module, which is already applied with the sensor, um, depending if it's uh, an incremental one or the absolute one. Uh, with the evaluation kit, uh, we also provide uh, a code disk, uh, which we um, can uh, change if somebody needs a different diameter, we can also uh, uh, send you uh, different diameters, different resolutions. And uh, what we normally also um, recommend is the uh, so-called motherboard, uh, which can be connected by a cable to the sensor head or the sensor board. And uh, here you can um, directly apply the uh, supply voltage and of course measure all the outputs. Uh, due to the fact that the PGE, PX and PR are not, uh, um, digitally or digitally programmable. Uh, this board comes with some switches where you can 
without software, without any adapters, um, additional adapters, you can switch to a certain resolution or certain output or interpolation rate. And uh, of course, uh, we have the ICPZ. Uh, for the ICPZ, this is a, a combination or a recommendation of the evaluation kit that we also offer uh, the um, uh, scanning module together with a certain disk. There are different sizes available, starting from, as I mentioned, the nine millimeter disk up to hollow shaft application up to 138 millimeter as a standard disk, which you can uh, buy uh, from IC house. And then uh, we have these motherboards, but due to the fact of the complexity of uh, ICPZ and the functionality, uh, of course, we need a certain BIS to PZ adapter where you can load the software and therefore program and uh, calibrate the sensor to your needs and to your requirements. And uh, I would like to show you, of course, some or these uh, evaluation kits also as a hardware. And starting, uh, for example, with the ICPZ, uh, here we have the, the uh, so-called motherboard, uh, which is connected to a BIS to a PZ adapter, where you um, can program, uh, where you can uh, start the software for calibrating, for uh, evaluating all these uh, position data, error handling, diagnosis, and things like that. Uh, then we have here the um, scanner module with the code disk, uh, depending on the sizes. And of course, um, we also offer linear um, scales, uh, which can be seen over here. Um, that means, for example, for the PZ, we also offer uh, 160 millimeter long glass scale. But of course, you can also get some linear scales targets um, for ICPX and ICPR. So uh, we have um, all these uh, evaluation kits available and some samples of uh, code disks and uh, scales, which can be easily ordered uh, throughout the sales and uh, all the distributor partners uh, so that you are very fast in evaluating all the performances of our sensors. So <clears throat> just to summarize the, the abstract, what I have shown here is um, the uh, four, smallest four millimeter disc for the ICPR as a three channel, A, B, Z, or analog output. Then uh, the eight millimeter ICPG for 30 millimeter or 30 absolute positions on one revolution output is a push button function and the gray code. And the ICPZ uh, with the highest uh, high absolute uh, resolution of uh, up to 20 bits absolute from a nine millimeter disc with all the flexibility of getting different outputs and different output formats. So what we like to um, um, show you also is uh, the uh, summarize and maybe like a line card and key specifications uh, of the shown um, optical reflective encoder ICs. And especially, I highly recommend to you uh, take a look, closer look into our mini encoder flyer. It's just a two slide or two pages uh, flyer where you have the um, sense of all these features and uh, 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 functionality of the sensor. And uh, if you have chosen or are interested in more detailed, of course, you can visit our website with all the specific data sheets and document technical documentations for the uh, different optical reflective encoder ICs. So this is, was a short overview. And uh, of course, we would be happy if you get in touch with us. Uh, please contact me or Mr. Etler if you have any if need any information or assistance regarding the optical reflective encoders. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Goran. Exciting movie. <laughs> Excellent presentation. Thank you. So I think then we can start with the Q&A session and um, we will go through this list. We have five minutes uh, left to the, uh, so we scheduled the 
webinar to 10. So we will uh, uh, go through them. And when you have to leave in time, uh, we will record this session and send you the link afterwards. So don't be afraid. Uh, you can watch the webinar and including the Q&A session in the video later on. Okay, uh, before we start, I have a question. When I'm related to, uh, let's say, normal size encoders, 42 millimeter, and I'm going now to develop an encoder in the mini encoder, is there something I have to pay attention to? No, um, that's the nice thing on um, these uh, reflective encoders, especially the incremental and the absolute uh, ICPZ. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the flexibility is that you just have to change the uh, code disk. Uh, the electronics stays the same. Uh, the programming of ICPZ is just slightly different, but the, the hardware is the same. So uh, we also um, can support customers on special requirements regarding diameters, optical radius, whatever. So um, that's uh, nice, flexible tools um, to, to just change the, the code disk. Okay, sounds good. Okay, then uh, we, I start with the customer questions. Um, is there any device capable for 3.3 volt supply? Um, no, uh, the output can be changed. For example, for the ICPZ, the output, digital output can be um, lowered to 3.3 volts. But um, it's more or less related to the physics because we, as we use a blue LED, and the blue LED is normally supply voltages, our starts from three volts. Uh, we are related to the analog supply of minimum five volts. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, yeah, dependent on the LED source that we have chosen here with the blue LED. But on the digital side, for example, it's possible to get the 3.3 volt um, digital interface. Okay, good, yeah. Um, I think the next question is already answered. Is there also linear scales available? You have mentioned this. We have scales for all these chips. Yes, we have. Talk, um, right? We have for the uh, incremental ones, uh, AB or ABZ. Uh, we have uh, linear um, uh, scales, but uh, we also uh, have uh, for the ICPZ, the as I mentioned, the glass scales. But um, it's also possible, as I mentioned, uh, to uh, support or to send the, the linear scale data if customers like to produce their own linear scales so that we can send the, the code file. Mm -hmm. uh, because as I mentioned, ICPZ can work up to 6.7 meter. We have done this, this in stock. No, we, we don't have this kind of linear scale. <laughs> it's a little bit too long, yeah. Okay. Um, does any of these devices have a current consumption of around 10 milliamps or less? Um, 10 milliamps is not possible. We, we have typically uh, current consumptions for incrementals depending of, of course also with the distance because as we have a control system where the sensor controls the LED current and stable output values, uh, values um, we can, uh, as I mentioned, uh, have a high variety or um, a difference in the um, air gap. And therefore, if you go to the lower end of the air gap, you can reduce the current consumption, but you will be a standard, I would say, in the range of 30 milliamps. That's what we have normally in our, for our sensors. Okay. Do in the range of 20 yeah. to 30 milliamps. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Uh, this was another question here. So, um, is there a way to add a multi-turn functionality to the ICP set based setup? Example, combining ICPZ with PMX and uh, using some kind of combined optical magnetic target. Yes, uh, we have um, made some application notes and please uh, get in touch and in contact with us. We can send you these uh, application notes where we have um, already um, tested and some uh, examples where uh, magnetic multi-turn can be used for, let's say, gear applications. And uh, these magnetic sensors are, um, this information are feeded into the PZ, PZ and uh, ends up in a final absolute position with multi-turn information. Um, this is possible with uh, different, we have also some optical sensors uh, for multi-turn applications. So please get in con contact with us or in touch with us, we will send you some more information. Mm -hmm. um, okay, next question. Have you experienced using the sensor in vacuum? Um, 
uh, we um, don't have any experience in um, these kind of application fields, but we know that some customers are um, have um, sealed uh, the sensor head um, for a vacuum application. That means that they have made some uh, prototypes um, with the PZ, for example, and PR, and they have uh, hermetically sealed the sensor inside uh, and still have an open window where they still can detect this code disk or this linear scale. So principle, yes, it's possible, but there have to be put some efforts on the hermetic sealing the, uh, the sensor itself. But uh, this uh, big air gap, let's say, from 1.75 millimeter helps then in this application. Right. Um, yeah. As um, uh, I have shown that the incremental uh, sensors um, work up to three millimeter, it's possible to and close the um, sensor in a hermetic seal package and still have the possibility to scan the, the code disk or the incremental track. Okay, good. Uh, how tolerant are disk sensor I see against contamination, dust, etc.? What kind of sealing should be proof or reliable working? Um, general, in generally, of course, uh, optical sensors, that's the nature of the sensor is, uh, of course, sensitive to dust and dirt. Um, you can find this um, uh, in our specification data sheet uh, where we have uh, the um, pinout also of the sensor, where we have uh, mentioned the optical criteria. Uh, but it's cl quite clear for, let's say, for the ICPZ, uh, due to the fact that it's a very high resolution um, sensor system, that uh, dirt and particles in the range of 50 micron will disturb, of course, the sensor. So with other words, when we talk about linear encoders, open linear encoders, uh, you have to check the yes, environment. They, uh, if they are not working in a proper environment, like a clean room or so, yeah. so on, um, it's very tough because it's not mentioned in, or the sensors are not made for open scales or open systems where um, mm -hmm. some contamination can come from, from the outside. Okay, good. Then next question, uh, are you able to produce custom code disk uh, to specific customer specifications? Yes, we do. Uh, okay. We do. Uh, that's um, what we offer uh, for the incremental and also for the absolute. Um, okay, good. Next question, do you need a clean room to assemble encoders? Uh, Preferable, of course, as I mentioned, that uh, small particles and small, uh, small dirt can um, uh, disturb the signals. Uh, but it's not a must. Uh, some customers are, um, of course, doing the SMT processes not in a clean room environment, but uh, the final process of housing and closing the encoder is done in, in a clean room or, let's say, in laminar flow boxes where you have very controlled uh, environmental um, mm -hmm. issues about uh, dirt and particles. Okay, good. Next question. Um, ICPZ can calibrate using a PC GUI. Then how, to, how do you assembly or calibration ICPG, PR, or PX? Um, PG, PR, and PX uh, don't have any uh, software interface or digital interface. Um, all the interpolation, for example, for the um, incremental ICPR are hardware-based, so it's pin programmable. Mm -hmm. Um, by um, different voltage uh, levels, so um, there is no need for any software or programming. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there a bake out needed before assembling the chip on a PCB? No, um, that's um, not needed or necessary. Um, the uh, package itself is uh, now switched to MSL level three. So within uh, these 168 hours um, of uh, production time, mm -hmm. there's no need for an additional bake-out or dry uh, environment for the sensor itself. Mm -hmm. uh, next is also an interesting question. Is there an encoder drum available to measure a rotary motion by 90 degrees sensor placement, sensor PCB parallel to the motor axis? Um, uh, in principle, yes, it's possible. Um, uh, there are some customers uh, who have done this, um, uh, but the, the point is that uh, currently we don't uh, have any suppliers uh, who can uh, apply such code on an um, outer um, surface. So these customers have made some own solutions on the, on the reflective target, 
But in principle, yes, it's possible. Uh, some minimum requirements regarding the diameter. Uh, we have seen that, uh, for example, the incremental sensors works very fine uh, for starting with a 40 to 50 millimeter diameter. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as you are in this range or bigger, um, there is no issue regarding the optical reflectancy and uh, the uh, uh, stray light that comes from, from the target. I think best way is to discuss such applications yes, of with course. you. Yeah. Okay, is there an upper limit um, for the diameter? I think this is another customer, so it's not related to this. I think in general, is there no. an upper limit for rotary? No, no the, um, the biggest thing, uh, incremental in disc that we, I know that the customer has milled is more than 350 millimeter disc. So uh, there is, uh, regarding from the electronic perspective or the optical, it's no, no issues or restrictions regarding at the higher end. Okay, okay. Um, what is the difference or the advantage between the blue LED and infrared LED technology? Um, basically, we have decided, uh, it's more seven years ago when we started the first optical reflective encoders. Uh, we have seen um, that uh, in the past, of course, there was some issues regarding the blue LEDs about the efficiency, um, thermal stability and things like that. But uh, due to the really high um, um, new um, developments and technology in blue LEDs, uh, we see that uh, these chips are very reliable, uh, very precise, and uh, with the shorter wavelengths, there are some advantages regarding, of course, regarding the optical projection and things like that. Okay, good. Uh, we are using ICPZ in one of our encoders. As you mentioned, a gap is 1.75, plus minus uh, 0 0.5 millimeter. Yes. I got accuracy issue when uh, gap is 1.5 millimeter. What is the problem? <laughs> um, what, what we know from some um, um, reports and feedbacks from customers is um, customers uh, sometimes have problems if they um, shorten the distance, the air gap, due to some uh, side reflections. Um, sometimes, if you um, are too close to, this, uh, to the code disk, there will be um, some reflections, maybe from the shaft mm -hmm. or from uh, some, uh, let's say, mounting um, uh, fixtures or mechanics that are nearby. Mm -hmm. um, because the LED uh, from uh, the ICPZ, because we don't use any secondary optics, um, is 140 degrees uh, viewing angle. Mm -hmm. That means uh, Every, every component that is very nearby can reflect and maybe disturb the signal. Maybe it's uh, due to the assembly or some uh, mechanics mm -hmm. that are nearby the, uh, the, the code disk or the sensor itself. Yeah, okay, good explanations. Please contact us in such case that we like yes, to discuss this. Yeah. Um, can these encoders I see used in a crusher application as the equipment has vibration is running? I assume that uh, it's meant to some uh, vibrations or, yeah. or shock. Uh, it's um, uh, the sensor itself, if it's a PR or PZ, uh, is not no difference between this sensor and other standard uh, IC components. It's more related to board reliability. Uh, that means uh, because we use here a QFN package, depends if uh, the board uh, is reliable or the Pad layout is reliable that um, can lead to some cracks, but we don't expect any um, issues regarding the sensor itself. Yeah. And the whole mechanics, because you're detecting the code disk, and when there is right. some losing there, then you detect a different position. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Okay. Um, are there ICs with I2C uh, or I3C output? No, not so far. Um, uh, the standard interface, especially if customers are combining um, uh, sensor or different sensor fusion sometimes, um, um, then of course it's, it's very common to use our SPI interface, for example, for the ICPZ, because it, then it's more or less a standard for um, to feed in this position data uh, or the temperature data from the sensor into the microcontroller. And, um, but uh, no special interfaces uh, beside yeah. this. We use I2C to connect the EEPROM for the configuration. Of course. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. um, 
for an incremental encoder output A, B, Z, can the set output width to be set A and B or uh, A only? I yeah. think he's talking about the index width if it's 90 degree when yes. it's A or B or 180 yes, degree. That's Possible? Uh, uh, was it ICPR, the incremental one? Uh, he doesn't write about yeah, the um, IC, but... Uh, uh, ICPR, the increment, starting with the uh, PR, it's possible, of course, to gate the index mm -hmm. uh, with the A or B or 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, do you supply code disk of various resolution along with the IC? Yes, <clears throat> if you, um, for example, if you look to um, on our website for the ICPR, there are listed uh, in the download section, there are listed some docu documents regarding different code disks for different sensors. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and same for the ICPZ. But as we mentioned before, if there are some special needs about uh, outer diameter, inner diameter, and certain optical radius, just get in touch with us and... Mm -hmm. We can but, recommend some. But the resolution of the code disk is always related to the diameter, right? Of, of course, because the uh, incremental uh, width that we use is always constant, mm -hmm. and uh, therefore different diameters will lead to different CPRs, native CPRs on the disk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are functional safety related application possible? Um, the sensors are not functional safety. We, we have some. Uh, Especially for such needs, we have some transmissive uh, ICs, like uh, ICR, air, um, um, transmissive sensors where you um, can get some uh, compliant item documentation. And uh, these uh, sensors are made definitely for such applications. Mm -hmm. IC um, PR um, is not made uh, for these kind of safety um, compliant item um, um, doc documents. Okay. Uh, can you use Mylar code disks for ICPR and ICPX? Yes, uh, we have uh, some um, um, in our uh, portfolios for um, also for the evaluation kit. Uh, some are made of uh, Mylar, some made of uh, plastic, uh, glass, um, and we have also aluminum. Mm -hmm. So we have different um, uh, substrates used for reflective encoder um, disks for mm -hmm. all scales. Okay, good. So, and at the moment, the last question, uh, does the calibration procedure require a full turn of the encoder uh, to a rotary scale or would a smaller turn sufficient? Yeah, um, it's not, not needed uh, for a full turn. Um, we, we're talking about the ICPZ. Um, for example, as uh, it's almost the same like for the linear. For linear application, you only need a certain back and forth movement. Mm -hmm. Same for part radial scanning. So uh, there is a minimum, I would say roughly, uh, let's say uh, 25, 30 degrees um, should be scanned, mm -hmm. but it's non, there's no need um, to have a full turn for calibration, the uh, analog and digital signals. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So I'm seeing from the back, we have no further questions. So. Goran, thank you for teaching us the world of mini encoder ICs and thank you to the audience to be so interactive with us and uh, asking so many questions. I think such a webinar lives from this. Uh, so thank you again. And uh, a little teaser, we will continue the webinar series uh, in May. We are planning a webinar related to our laser um, product group or portfolio. And there we're thinking about uh, making a webinar about our laser tool setup we are providing. And um, uh, in March, uh, we will be uh, the first time on the Embedded World Show in Nuremberg in the middle of March. So please visit us. We are there. We have our own booth. And uh, we're happy to see you there or within one of the next webinars. So thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. I see house. Integrated circuits.